My good friend and distinguished former Treasury Secretary Stephen Mnuchin is here to weigh in on life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Stephen, welcome back to the show. Um, let's just open your thoughts on this um, awful story in the Middle East. What are you thinking? Well, Ari, first of all, it's great to be with you. Um, needless to say, this is a terrible situation with Israel having been attacked by Hamas, and the number one priority is for Israel to defend itself. And I, I couldn't be happier to see the U.S. support Israel and an entire government focus on that. Um, I, I think, as you mentioned in your opening, a, a big issue here is the oil sales to Iran. I think, as you know, we had a maximum pressure campaign against Iran. There were not these types of oil sales when President Trump was in office and we were managing this. And that, that's not coincidental. We made it very clear to China and the rest of the world that we were going to enforce these sanctions, both primary sanctions and secondary sanctions. You know, um, Stephen, let me just read you something, a very good op-ed from uh, Mitch McConnell, Senator Mitch McConnell. I'm just going to read real quickly. Quote, the West should reimpose extensive multilateral sanctions on Tehran and deny Iranian planes oversight rights, impound the shipping vessels Iran uses to circumvent sanctions, close Iranian banks with access to the West, and cease the Iranian operations of European businesses, treat Iranian officials like pariahs, and sink Iranian naval boats that threaten international shipping. Now, that's the kind of tough stuff, but Congress, as you know, I mean, you are in charge of putting together the sanctions for the administ Trump administration. I mean, Congress has mandated this stuff. Um, the current administration says it hasn't eased the sanctions. Um, I don't buy that. And I don't know why we can't reimpose them, because, you know, behind this Hamas uh, catastrophe is Iran. Well, Ari, there's no question, and, and the Hamas situation is the problem of today. But as you know, the thought of Iran getting nuclear weapons is also a, a very big problem, and that's another reason why we need to have these sanctions in place. And both the existing sanctions need to be enforced, but new sanctions need to be put on them. Mm. Um, you know, the, the dollar is the reserve currency of the world. We do have power in these sanctions. As I've said before, we need to be very careful how we use them. But clearly, this is a situation where we're very justifiable in, in using the sanctions and in cutting off uh, the flow of dollars to Iran. That should be the number one priority at the moment uh, for the Treasury. And, um, Stephen, can we keep them out of the dollar system? I mean, you talked about secondary sanctions, stop banks. I mean, American banks can't do business with it, but we want international banks, foreign banks, European banks, uh, Chinese banks, for that matter. Can we keep them out of the dollar system? I mean, really put the heat on. Larry, you saw us do that. Um, we, were, we were very effective. There's a reason why there weren't oil sales of this magnitude at the time. We were very clear in managing these sanctions programs, and whether it was with China or whether it was other countries, being very clear how we would enforce them. So I, I believe that uh, the U.S. government can act and can stop the, uh, a significant amount of these oil sales and revenue flowing to them. And I think that's got to be a major part of the plan while Israel defends itself. Yeah. I mean, for some reason, Iran has escaped. Um the approbation of the administration, but I think that's a, a big mistake. It sounds like you do, too. Is there anything specific, uh, Secretary Mnuchin, that you would like to see done on this front? Well, I, I was pleased to see that there is some reporting on the $6 billion, that it appears that the, the position is being reversed, at least according to some of the reporting, that that money is frozen. Um, that would be a good start. And I think going after the, the oil revenues is definitely a priority and the bigger issue. Yeah. Okay. Great stuff. Couldn't agree more. Thank you for that. Um, let's turn our uh, sights on the American economy for just a moment. Um, what's your take? Are we getting stronger, weaker? Uh, inflation looks to me very sticky. What does Secretary Mnuchin see? Well, Ari, there's no question. Uh, inflation has been harder for the Fed to control, I think, than they thought. You know, as I said at the time, th this is really as a result of what was very large fiscal spending that continued after we left office. 
um, you know, in, in the post-COVID area. So there's no question that's a big component of this. Uh, I mean, I, I think, you know, it's beginning to get under control. But having said that, uh, I think it's going to be very sticky and it's going to take into next year. Um, I think the Fed is close to done. There's no question the fact that long-term interest rates have risen significantly also will help the Fed's job. That's going to slow down the U.S. economy. Um, my own view is that long-term treasuries have a little bit more to go. Um, there's a lot of supply coming in treasuries and financing these deficits, which are likely to get bigger with special funding for Israel and Ukraine. So I think there'll be continued pressure on the long end of the curve. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the Treasury is selling a lot of bonds, but the Fed is not buying them at the rate that they used to. In fact, the Fed is shrinking their balance sheet. So um, that almost guarantees higher rates, or, or, or do you think they peaked? Well, it, 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 does, it does guarantee slightly higher rates, in my opinion. And the Fed is doing the right thing by shrinking its balance sheet. That's another way of managing monetary policy. But that is going to force the private markets to take up a bigger share of the issuance. And, you know, you mentioned in your opening, uh, look, I think there's going to be risk pressure against equities as the U.S. economy slows down. And the big unknown is what happens to oil prices if the situation in the Middle East continues to escalate. Let me just go back to that um, last point. It's an important point. Um, you spent a lot of time in the Middle East when you were in government. And the Saudis were apparently close to some kind of um, normalization, I'll call it, with Israel before this. Uh, I don't know if you have any insight into that or not, but uh, so far, Steve, we haven't seen a blow up. We haven't seen oil prices blow up. We haven't seen, you know, anything like the uh, Arab oil embargo, uh, whatever, 50 years ago in the middle 1970s. From your experience and uh, perhaps your ongoing contacts, how do you think this plays out? Will they stay neutral, the Saudis? Will there be skyrocketing oil? or not? Well, I'm, I'm just going to say I think there's, there's a lot of our partners in the Mideast that are trying to be helpful in this situation. And obviously, the, the major focus right now is for Israel to defend itself. Um, I, I think there is capacity to bring more capacity online, even, even if uh, Iran cuts their their capacity through sanctions. I think the other issue, Larry, that you know is we need to increase domestic production. Mm -hmm. um, we have plenty of capacity here. We have both capacity for oil. We have capacity for natural grass. Um, you know, there, there's a time for climate change and to be worried about that. But right now, these are national security issues. And we should make sure that the U.S. has plenty of energy to supply ourselves and supply our allies. As, as you know, we were working on selling LNG to Europe and can be very cost effective at these types of prices. You know, if we were, if we were uh, producing 14, 15 million barrels a day, which is what the Energy Department trend line said a couple years ago, we could have made this an entirely different and more hospitable situation in the Middle East and the rest of the world and Russia and Ukraine. I mean, I think you hit your, you know, you hit the nail on the head. It's a key factor. Shouldn't be overlooked. I mean, producing more and the inflation rate will be lower, Steve, because oil enters petroleum, as you know, enters into a lot of prices throughout the economy. I mean, I think it's one of the greatest well, mistakes. Larry, as, as you, you know, energy security is national security. Yeah. And when, when oil prices were at all-time lows, you and I were trying to get money to fill up the strategic reserve. <laughs> yes, I do remember. All right. Former Treasury Secretary and good friend Steve Mnuchin, thank you.